Who are you? My name is Fat Mike. From? I'm from Boston, Massachusetts originally. I play No Effects and also me first in the Gimme Gimme's. Fat Mike, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you. It's very nice here. I've never been here. Believe it or not, I think probably the seventh time that we have interviewed together. Oh, uh, I don't remember that. Have we met before? 14 years worth of interviews dating back to 2002. Yeah, you do look a little familiar. And right off the bat, Fat Mike, I have a gift for you on Arnold Palmer record with a booklet. And that is for you. Oh, and step by step. Thank you so much. This is cool because, look, he's hitting, he's using a baseball bat. That's pretty cool. I didn't know he could do that. And it comes with a book, too. Oh, this is awesome. This is an extremely nice present. What do you think of golf? golf? Yeah, like you have a golf dom tattoo. Bam, boom. What do they say now? Bam or boom? Uh, baboom. Baboom, baboon. There it is with a, with a, a maid, a, a tailor maid, as you <laughs> may call her. Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer golf instructions. Yeah, Arnold Palmer golf instructions and, uh, and how to make an Arnold Palmer instructions on the back too a uh, baboom <laughs> yeah now we could I, I do want to pour some lemonade and iced tea on his grave one day yeah, that'd be nice mark ramon did say this punk rockers they don't play golf uh, yeah uh <laughs> i guess uh he would be you know if he was an original ramon maybe i would take that seriously but uh if i maybe if Didi said it what are your interactions with the Ramones? What are your interactions with the Ramones? Uh, well, I've met them all. Uh, not Johnny. Johnny had me kicked off stage uh, once. But uh, Why? For what? Why would somebody kick Fat Mike off the stage? Well, it's funny because it was a festival we played with them and the Offspring. And I was the only people on stage. We were way on the side was me and Brian Holland. And he looked at us and t told security, get that guy off there. And, and they didn't kick Brian Holland off, but they kicked me off. And I, I wouldn't go. I, I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not leaving. And Brian said, it's okay. He's with me. And these two security guards actually picked me up and took me off the stage. So, but, you know, Joey was afterwards, Joey's like, I'm sorry, dude. Johnny's just, Joey was very cool. Uh, one thing funny about that show is, you know, they did, the, they, had, they did the same set list without stopping. They just played their songs. So they, there was one sheet of paper in front of uh, Joey on the stage, and it said Oslo, Norway. And after they played six songs, he looked down and said, it's great to be back in Oslo, Norway. <laughs> and it was? It, it, was, it was. He was right. It was Oslo, Norway. But that's, uh, that's where they were uh, mentally at that point of their career is just, just tell me what city and country I'm in. That's all I need to know. Thought, Mike, have you ever nailed kids' clothes to the floor? Uh, yes. But, but not just like children's clothes. You have to nail the clothes down to the floor when a, a person is in them and passed out. See, then it's funny. If you just nail clothing to the floor, that would, wouldn't, that would be stupid. But, you know, watching a kid try to get up when his clothes are nailed to the floor, that's funny. That's in the early days of no effects? Yes. When did Smelly piss on a cat? I don't remember him pissing on a cat. I remember him uh, throwing a barbecue through a window. Let's throw a barbecue, <laughs> you know, and uh, doing a lot of mean, terrible things, pissing in people's ice trays. Uh, I do remember watching him put uh, plaster of Paris on a kid's leg. That was a good one. Right now, I would like to ask you about this particular compilation. Yes. We got power. Oh, boy. Caustic Cause. Yep. That's Smelly's first band. What can you say about this comp and Caustic Cause? Well, this is the first Mystic comp, which is quite good. We're on uh, No Effects, or as they call us, No Fix, <laughs> is on the second Mystic comp. Not as good. There's also a band on here called, where are they? The Dayglow Abortions. Yeah, no, no, not them. From Victoria, Canadian. Yeah, never heard of them. Uh, Sin34. Good friend, Adrenaline OD. This is a very good, very, very good comp. Nip Drivers. Back then, you could call your band something like the Nip Drivers. And we also had the Copulation yeah. soundtrack. This one. This is when we were really at our at when NoFX was at our prime. No, I don't see you listed there. Yes, because we're not on it. 
see. But America's Hardcore yeah. are on it. America's Hardcore are pretty great. We were on, we, we weren't on We Got Power 1 or Cop, Copulation 1. We were on Copulation 2 and We Got Power 2. What do you think about America's Hardcore? Aren't they kind of responsible for no effects? Uh, I don't, in one way, I guess. Their second singer sang with us at our first rehearsal. So, and once their first singer, Danny, I once saw him beat the guy, a guy with a folding chair till he was hospitalized. Yep. That's amazing. Another story from <laughs> Fat. <laughs> yeah. Mike. But you know, what was weird about it is how not weird it was. Like, oh, there goes Danny beating up another guy with a folding chair. So you were on Copulation 2. Mm-hmm. Cops and Donuts. Cops and Donuts, yeah. Woo. But Copulation 1, if you open it up, there is a little piece of paper inside. Oh. What does it say exactly? I don't know. This card is for info. What, I don't know. What do you want from me? What are the answers to those punk questions? Where did you buy this record? How much did you pay? Uh, I'm not answering this. I'm not playing your, your silly game. Mystic. We're on Mystic Records. So what? What's also the deal? It is Mistake Records. That's what the, everyone called them. What's the deal? Like, I love Mystic. They put out those amazing comps. Uh, and Arnold Palmer. Oh, what can you say about Mystic Records, Fat Mike? Uh, Mystic Records was, uh, I don't know, maybe like the Walmart of, no, like the McDonald's of punk labels. No, nothing like that. That's a terrible analogy. Uh, Mystic Records was just a terrible record label, but it was the only deal in town. And we had the punk club. On, and a half a block away, we had the Cathay de Grand, a half a block away was Mystic Records. So they come see bands and say, you should come over to our studio and record. So they let you record for an afternoon, and then they put out a lot, a lot of terrible bands. Same engineer, always sounded the same, and we, uh, we all had to sign contracts saying that, none of, that we don't own any of these songs. At that time, were a lot of people sitting down to no effects? Yes, those were the sitting down years. Uh... Yeah, that was that. Uh, mostly p- people stood, but there were, you know, when the crowd was sitting down, we we made sure to get photos of all those. Here is another band I want to ask you about: the Mentors on Mystic. Yeah, Mentor. Well, everyone was on Mystic, really. At some point, every punk band was on Mystic. What can I say about the Mentors on Mystic or the Mentors on Death? Uh, more of a Mystic band. I used to see them at the cafe. We we spent some time with El Duce. You know how they found El Duce. Dead? Found him dead with no head. I did not know that. Yes. He found him on train tracks with his head on one side and his body on, on the other. Committed suicide? No. It finally, and you are fat? <laughs> I'm Fat Mike. Does anyone drink piss? Like, have you seen anyone drink piss before you drank piss? Uh, sure. We used to to hang out with this band, the 2000 Dirty Squatters, and we saw them when they ran out of booze. All the beer was gone, so they were pissing in glasses and drinking it just to get the, whatever alcohol was left in the piss glasses. But that really wasn't for, you know, oh, a booger. I drink piss for more of a, for more, you know, sexual reasons. Has the Google guy... You know, it's not very often either. It's not like... It's how long did it take for you to drink piss? Well, how, I mean, how long? How many years of your life? Oh, I didn't till my 40s. So that, is that pretty late for piss drinking? Uh, well, most states have uh, an above 30 age limit, you know, before you're allowed to. So I still waited a long, longer time than that. But uh, you know, it's not, it's not about really drinking the piss. It's, uh, it's where, it's where, it's where, it's the tap is, and whose tap it is, <laughs> where the piss is coming from. Did the Google guy really see your musical? The Google guy. The Google guy. Who's the Google guy? Well, the I think his name is Larry. The Google guy. Try saying the Google guy three times. I, I will let you say that. No, 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 it's impossible. Say it, do it. The Google guy, the Google guy, the Google guy. <laughs> I meant fast, you know, but never mind. You really like things fast. Like you complained about Joan Jett being too slow, right? Uh, 
Yeah. But now you have gold records, right? N- n- well, maybe one. You remember that, huh? We have met before. We have met before. Yeah, I remember now. Speaking of piss drinking, I have another gift for you, Fat Mike of No Effects, the Fervert's book. What do you think of this Fervert's book? Uh, you know, I am into a lot of fighting, fucked up things, but yeah, I don't really get the furry thing. But whatever makes you happy. This is a cool book, though. I like it. You never, never thought about that. Never fantasized about that. You've never dressed up as an animal. No, I wouldn't say that. Not a furry. Have you ever covered your face? What do you mean? Completely covered your face. Well, with yeah. So you are a fervert. No, no, because nothing furry. Fur isn't sexy. <laughs> what is it like, Fat Mike, to have saline injected into your testicles? Uh, well, uh, that was fine. When I had saline injected into my breasticles, that was something else. That part we left out of the book. What happens then? Like, what happens with your balls and what happens with your breasts? Well, uh, my wife, she put uh, 250 cc's of saline solution in my breasts in Jamaica. And uh, for about 12 hours, I got tits. I was walking on, down the beach with fucking tits. Could not stop touching myself. Just like, this is awesome. That's what it's like. It hurts, though. It's about an hour to get it in there. And I was on ecstasy and it still fucking hurt. Uh, Mike, when you were younger, did Elizabeth Bewitched order some pills from you? Yes, but I didn't know what kind of pills they were because they were all coded. And I was only 16, so I wasn't doing drugs yet. But yeah, I, I delivered drugs to Johnny Carson too, to uh, quite a few stars, to uh, Sammy Davis Jr. But they never answered the door. But Elizabeth Montgomery answered the door. And your grandfather produced young Daniel Boone? No, he did uh, Daniel Boone. I did not know that. I know he did uh, Charlie... Ch- uh, what's it? Charlie Chan? Charlie Chan. He did Charlie Chan movies. Did not know about Daniel Boone. Young Daniel Boone. Young Daniel Boone. What can you say, Fat Mike, about this particular gig right here? The Long Shoreman's Hall. This is the Dead Kennedy Show where we went to and... It was so crowded. It was really terrible because the Minutemen played, and it was just terrible to see the Minutemen in front of 2,000 punk rockers. Dead Kennedys played, and uh, we left a little bit early because it was so crowded, and it sounded so bad. And right when we were leaving, the cops came in and maced everybody and beat the hell out of everybody. And, you know, we got out in our in Floyd's mom's van. Do you still have a lot of punk rock memorabilia collected? Because I knew you had yeah. a shrine. Like, what, what about punk rock memorabilia? Yeah. Like, for instance, like, do you know who gave Sid that lock? I would guess Nancy. No, it actually was the girl from the Pretenders, Chrissy Hine. Yeah? Well, that's pretty cool. Where did you get? Who gave you that lock? Uh, my wife. They make them in Japan now. What can it say about Smelly and Canada? I don't know. Why don't you ask Kimmy standing right over there? (laughs) Ba-boom. Made you look. (laughs) (laughs) You did indeed, because you are fat. I am fat. I put on some weight on this tour. Thank you. Do people take your word for gospel? Like, I believed Fat Mike. Uh, I'm I'm really not a liar. So you should take my word. I mean, I, I, I... I'm sure I've said something mistakenly. Like, uh, in the book, I made a mistake. Someone called and said, it wasn't Sean M.D. that hit your friend Steve in the in the, the face with a beer bottle. It was Engineer. I'm like, oh, right, it was Engineer. Sorry. It happened. I just got the, the wrong guy. I love the book that you have footnotes. You have footnotes. Yeah. Whose idea was that, to have footnotes? I don't know, the footnote guy? It looks really legit to have footnotes. Yeah, it's a legit book. You know, today, happening to be today speaking about foot is uh, I was walking down the street and this, this Asian lady came up to you and said, I love your boots. Where'd you get those boots? Macy's. Fat Mike, for years you've told me and I have believed that El Jefe was in the Bad News Bears. Yeah, that was a big fat lie. You're a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fat Mike. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you see, that's the thing is if you tell all true stories, once in a while you can throw in a real whopper and people believe it. <laughs> but he was in 90210, which is amazing. He was an actor. Yeah, he was in a, a few – he had a few extra roles. That's why it was so easy to make that, that jump because he actually was an extra. Because I love that. The, I love the dancing that El Jefe does. Well, you got the dancing look. You got the whole dancing – you got the whole electric bugaloo look going on, really. Only the best for fat. I, I'm not that fat, you know. For fat, Mike. All right. So uh, I'm supposed to meet someone. Just winding up here, I would like to ask you about this band right here, the Yeasty Girls. Yes, the Yeasty Girls. I know where you're going with this. They introduce you to? Bad Religion Suffer, the album that changed my life. How did that happen? The Yeasty Girls, the amazing Yeasty Girls. They were in Amsterdam the same time I was at the Fugazi show. And they said, you got to hear the new Bad Religion album. It's really good. And I listened to it four times in a row, and it was life-changing but previously what have you thought of bad religion well they're one of my favorite bands but you know after how how uh, could hell be any worse than they did the terrible album and then the frogger thing and we all kind of stopped listening to them and they came back pretty much the best comeback record of all time Fat Mike, winding up here here we are backstage at a no effects gig I think we're winding down dude winding down with Fat Mike you stole at one time some Slayer snacks? Yes. We played with Slayer, and while they were, after they were almost done, and we went into their backstage room and stole some, you know, some of their snacks. Slayer snacks versus no effect snacks. What's the difference? Ours were gone, theirs were still there. We were hungry. But what do you have versus what do they have? They had a, you know, I don't know. How about that? That is a great answer, Fat Mike. And I was curious, lastly here, funny or die. How funny do you have to be for funny or die? Ish. Ish. What was the pitch? For our video? They actually, they're no effects fans. They asked, they asked us if we wanted to do a video with them. They asked us years earlier. And we had a meeting and we, none of us could come up with something funny. And then I had this new song. I go, what do you think of this? And they said, let's do it. And they paid for it. Pretty cool. And last, no, lastly, no, Fat Mike. I have two lastlies. Uh, I was curious. What do you think of this record right here? It's okay. I have two lastlies. You said lastly twice. That makes no sense. And nothing makes any sense with Fat. Mike, what do you think about It's Okay to Say No? That genre of records. It's okay to uh, say no. I don't know. It's okay to say no. Oh, it looks kind of sketchy. Well, thank you very much, Fat Mike. Anything you'd like to add to the people out there? No, it's nice to meet you, though. Maybe we'll meet again sometime. Why should people care about Fat Mike and no effects? Why should people care? We, 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 we've, we're, we finished the interview. This has been pleasant. Well, thank you very much, Fat Mike. Keep on rocking in the free world and do do loot do Oh, oh. Ugh.